Minecraft is one of the most influential video games ever created and it never stops amazing us with its creativity. My name is Richard Carpenter, a web design illustrator, and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to be creative by recreating the Minecraft text effect. Okay, so once you're in Illustrator, create a new document 1920 by 1080 pixels. Then set up the following three swatches, which will form the base colours of our text. You'll also want to download the Minecrafter font, which I've linked down in the description. So once you have those sorted, let's begin with the type tool and simply type out your desired word using the Minecrafter font. Change the fill colour of the text to the light grey colour swatch and then go to Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. Using the Extrude and Bevel options, we can transform the perspective of our text into the typical Minecraft look. And the settings you want to use are 20, 1, 0, with a perspective of 70. And then we can adjust the depth to 80. And if we just check the preview option, we can just have a look what that looks like. And then press OK. While well, the text is still selected, we need to expand the appearance. So to do that, go to Object, Expand Appearance, and then we want to ungroup our layers three times. Next, we need to select all the faces of each letter. So hold on the Shift key, select the front face of each letter, and then we need to convert this into a compound path. To do that, you need to go to Object, Compound path, make. We now need to repeat this for all the bottom faces, so all the shapes which are facing down. Again, hold on the shift key, just select each face. And instead of converting this into a compound path, what we want to do is go to the Pathfinder tool and select the Unite option. We now need to repeat this for all the remaining shapes or these shapes which are on the side and the quicker way to do this is to hide and lock your compound path and your bottom shapes and then just highlight all the remaining shapes then go to the pathfinder tool and then hit the unite option and then if we unhide and unlock we should have three individual layers Next we want to make a duplicate of the front facing layer, so select the layer, hold down the Alt key, drag above it, and if you hold the Shift key it will snap into its vertical position, and then reselect the original layer and go to Edit, Copy. While the text is still selected, change it to the colour white, and then go to Edit, Paste in place. So essentially what we end up with is the original layer and a white coloured layer. Now reselect the top grey layer and then using the arrow keys on your keyboard, press up twice and right twice. So one, two, one, two. Make a selection around both text shapes and then within the Pathfinder tool, select the intersect option. And what that does, that will just remove a portion of each letter to enable us to give it a more of a bevel effect. Once you've intersected the shape, using the arrow keys, move it back into place, moving it to the left twice and then down twice using the arrow keys. So one, two, one, two. And once you've moved the text layer back into its original position, just go to edit, paste in place, which will repaste the original version we copied to the clipboard. And while that text is still selected, we just want to fill that with the colour white and then position it behind using the control open square bracket shortcut. To enable us to see a little bit more clearly, select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle which covers our artboard. Fill it with the colour of your choice and then send it right to the back. And then we just want to lock the background layer 
into its position to stop it from moving and then we can begin to add some color to our text so for the colors of each letter we first want to select the sides and fill this with the darkest gray color and then the bottom of our shapes if we could just color pick that darkest color again and just do a lighter variation and then if we select the top text layer and add a gradient for the first color we want to use the lightest gray and for the second color we want to use the second lightest and then we want to change the angle of the gradient to 90 degrees and if we just select the gradient tool and actually reverse this so the lighter part of the gradient sits at the top and the darker sits at the bottom now we've added the colors the next bit we need to do is add the black outline so make a selection around your text hold down the alt key to drag duplicate and then hold down the shift key to keep the vertical alignment while the text is still selected from within the pathfinder tool select the unite option and then go to object compound path release and then hit the unite option again and then what that does that just removes any of the stray points which were there from when we added the 3d extrude as you can see there's still one stray point so if you set the pen tool and just remove that path and then go to object path offset path and then you want to offset the path by 10 pixels once you've offset the path reselect everything and again hit the unite option within the shape finder tool and then go to object compound path release and then again hit the unite option within the pathfinder tool and then we just want to change the color of this to black position it under our text group and then move this back into its original position in this next part we're actually going to be recreating the stone texture from the minecraft game and to do this we first want to select the rectangular grid tool which can be found from within the line segment tool menu click anywhere on the artboard and create a grid size of 16 by 16 with 15 vertical and 15 horizontal dividers and then press ok because this is essentially be 16 pixels by 16 pixels it is exactly the same as the minecraft texture if we just zoom all the way in and temporarily fill our grid with a grey colour and then we want to convert our grid into a live paint so it will allow us to fill each individual square to match that of the minecraft texture so go to object live paint and make and I've actually colour picked the colours from the original texture and if you want to know what they are they are 8f 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 7f 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 and 6868668 because we've converted the grid to a live paint what we can do is press the letter k which will give us a paint bucket which will then allow us to fill each individual square with its own relative colour so if we press i for the eyedropper tool and just colour pick one of the swatches press k and then we can just drag and click and randomly fill our square with some random colours and essentially what we're going to be doing is recreating the original minecraft texture once you finish filling each square with its own relative colour we need to release the live paint tool from from the grid and to do that we need to go to object live paint and then release and then we just want to go to object group and make sure that this the texture and all the squares are grouped together and then what we can do is if we zoom out and scale the texture up big enough to overlay our duplicate copy that we created earlier and we just want to place our texture over the top repeating the pattern so copying and pasting so the whole texture spans the width of our text select each texture group and go to object group to group it all into one and then drag the texture group layer underneath the text and then make a selection around both right click 
and go to make clipping mask and then we can drag the clipping mask back to its original place making sure the group now sits on top of everything else now we have the texture in its place select the texture layer and then under the transparency tab change the blend mode to either soft light if you just want a subtle pattern or you can change it to hard light if you want something a bit more harsh and stands out and what you could always do is also change the opacity just so it blends in that little bit more and then finally if we make a copy of our pattern and paste it so it fills our artboard group everything together and then make a copy of the background rectangle select both layers right click and go to make clipping mask drag the pattern above our original rectangle and it will fill our background with our texture and then again what we can do is change the blend mode to something like soft light or hard light depending on your preference and that's it and then using the tools and techniques used throughout the tutorial you could potentially add a few more details and have something which looks like this that's it for this one folks if you enjoyed the video don't forget to give me a thumbs up and i'll see you all in the next one